God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to rise close in our minds and having the activity of our limbs. Father, we just say thank you because you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And with that thankfulness, Lord, we come to worship you on today. So Holy Spirit, come, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening power. Set this place on fire with your spirit from up above. Lord, we ask that you let it rain from breast to breast, from heart to heart, from soul to soul, that it would touch, stare up, and convict somebody on today in the midst of this service. Lord, we put the choir in your hand. We put the musicians in your hand. We put the ushers in your hand. We put all things in your hand that would be a part of this worship experience. Lord, take us out of self and allow us just to worship on you and just you and only you, Lord. That we'll leave this place better than we came. Lord, we are so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. We thank you for the anointing that is in this building. Continue to let it rain. And Lord, we thank you for the anointing that is in the midst of our social media service. Touch and heal according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
shall go to see what the end is going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. Give it up to the choir one more time. Amen. Amen. To get to where they are, it took leadership and discipline. Amen. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm amazed. I'm amazed of what the, how they have grown over the year. Amen. Our scripture lesson is found. On the, on the screen, <laughs> amen. 
Uh, amen. Now the feast of the unleavened bread has drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judah, surnamed Issachariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and captains, how they might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he said here and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where will you that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And you shall say to the good man of the house, The master says to you, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large tupper room, furnished, there made ready. And he went as they had found, and he said to them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto him, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup. Gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to them, saying, This is my body, which is broken, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. And truly, son of man goes, as it was determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Altogether, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. From all that dwells below the sky, let thy creator's praise arise. Let thy redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. the contemporary version of the Decalogue, hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourselves any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. 
Shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. continue to worship on today we want to thank everyone for being in the house one more time and and all those that are tuning in on our social media platforms we greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are honored to have you worshiping with us on today and if you're visiting with us here in the building and you would uh, like to acknowledge like for like to acknowledge yourself and would like for and we want to love on you Give you some good old southern hospitality love by standing and letting us know your name and where you're from. And we will definitely love on you and those on our social media platforms. If you're just visiting with us virtually, please uh, send us a uh, direct message and we will respond and welcome and love on you virtually. Amen. 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 God bless. God bless. We are all at home on today. And we all know that the, there's no stranger in the house of God because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we are just able and to, just to be able to be able to worship together one more time together. All right, all right, choir, come on and give us another selection and we'll continue to worship. Amen.
I mean, they know that the storm is passing over. Hey, man, this thing, this thing I'm going through is just temporarily because the storm is passing over. I may have been sick for a little while, but the storm is passing over. My money may have been funny for a little while, but the storm is passing over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that the storm is passing over. Amen, amen. While you all are trying to find Psalms 138, Psalms 138, um, I was contacted last week and uh, waiting that Cox had uh, did some upgrades in the area and uh, they need to come in and upgrade our modem, our equipment here. And uh, so we've having some problems online today. And so uh, as soon as Cox and I can link up our schedules to upgrade the, the equipment, uh, we prayerfully that will work out the uh, glitches that we've been experiencing over the past months. So. Uh, so yes, they uh, made some upgrades, and our equipment now is outdated and needs to be upgraded. <laughs> but but it's on their part. <laughs> Amen. It's on their part. Uh, and so again, as soon as I can come down and wait for them to meet them here and upgrade the equipment that needs to be upgraded, Preferably, it will take care of all the glitches that we have been experiencing. And uh, before you all go home and start talking, I do want to comment that, that the one chair that I sit in, the center chair, is not covered, amen? <laughs> because this chair is broken and it is damaging the linen. So I made sure to let them know the stewardesses don't cover this chair because we don't need to be wasting money. It's cost, it's, it's cost effectiveness, amen? So, so, so we, we, we still, we still in order, we still fine, amen? <laughs> I'm talking to all the traditionalists this morning. <laughs> amen, amen, we still fine, we still fine. And, uh, and, 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 and if you wanna get it fixed, uh, put on put on your envelope. This is specially to fix this chair. Amen. <laughs> but not only that, I need you to go out and find an upholstery, a person that can fix it. Because uh, you know we just got to get some estimates. Amen. I need y'all to work on this. Amen. Now now let's get into Psalms 138. I'm gonna highlight verses one and two. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your mercy and your truth. For you have made your word great according to all your name. Most gracious God, our heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, I decrease for you to increase. Help me preach this word to the people that they will leave this place with a burning desire to worship and praise you in the beauty of holiness. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, sir. Come on, preacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, it's time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need some love. Mm. Yes, sir. Come Looking on. at that first verse, I picked out one word. Early this morning, and then at the breakfast table, I asked my wife, is this heart month? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she confirmed that February is heart month. And so on this first one, it said, I will give you thanks with all my heart. Come on now. And the tag of theme creating a heart of worship. Amen. So this morning I was asking Brother David, how can you give thanks with all your heart? How? Because we live in a world Filled with uncertainty and turmoil. You can find unwavering confidence in the steadfast love of God. David composed this psalm as an expression of his deep and personal relationship with God. I mean, if you just read the entire Psalms 138 verses 1 through 8 is personal. And at some point, you can identify with Brother David. He provides an example of how to approach God with a wholehearted praise and trust, regardless of life circumstances. Developing a heart for God is not as difficult as it may sound. You must develop those qualities of God's heart if you are to live a life that is of worth. So in order to have a life that is worth something, heart must be right with God. In Psalms 138, David provided some ingredients for developing a heart for God. Well, I believe that your heart must be converted. When your heart has been converted, You'll give praise that involves a deep, personal, and authentic expression of gratitude and admiration by reflecting on the blessings, provisions, and grace that you have received from God. So, so, so when you hear someone else worshiping and praising, it's because of their authentic personal relationship that they have with God. Come on now. Amen. It's, 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 it's not something that, uh, you know, that they uh, are trying to mimic or, or trying to do because they saw somebody else do. That's right, that's right. But it's because of something authentic. That's right. Their authentic relationship between that person and, and God, an intimate moment with God. And 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 and, and uh, 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 just because you grew up in a Christian home, being baptized or joining a church does not mean that you are converted. Praying to invite Jesus into your heart, making a decision for Christ, or having an emotional spiritual experience does not necessarily mean that you are converted. Your conversion may or may not have been dramatic or an emotional experience similar to Paul 
that we preached about a few weeks ago on the Damascus Road. There are other times a person may have a gradual awareness that God has done a work in their heart. Yeah, yeah. We all don't have those dramatic uh, and emotional experience. See, but I can testify that I had a dramatic and, 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 and an emotional experience with, with God, with God. And, and that was a part of my conversion. But others may say, I, 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 I didn't have that type of experience, but I had a gradual experience of God working on my heart. Uh, 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 you're, you're, you know, yeah, yeah. Moreover, conversion uh, 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 um, is, uh, is the unmerited favor and choice of God to impart new life in the human heart and a right standing before him based on the work of the cross or of Christ on the cross. See, Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what you set your hearts on is what you, what you treasure the most. So if you set your heart on God, your treasure will be in God and all other things will come second. But if your treasure is, if your heart is set on the materialistic things of this world, then you will never have time for God. But when you have set your heart and mind and soul on God, then the conversion takes place in your life. Then you will be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep your heart set on God. And once you have been truly converted, the Holy Spirit will dwell inside of you. Must have a converted heart in order to worship God with all your heart. Uh, and, 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 and as a uh, a result of being converted, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will dwell on the inside. And that leads me to the second thing that I extracted is that your heart must be spirit-filled. And so to be a person after God's heart, you must be truly converted and walk daily in dependence on the Holy Spirit. You remember that WWJD, uh, uh, what would Jesus do? That's that, you know, you would often, uh, going through life's ordinary places, and when you come in contact with a situation, you run into an obstacle, or when you come into a crisis, you want to want to say, what WWJD, what would Jesus do? What what would the Holy Spirit tell you to do in order to overcome that situation? In order, in order for the Spirit to dwell in you, you must confess your sins and yield con uh, consciously and continually to the Holy Spirit to produce fruit in your life. Uh, yeah, you may say that I've been saved up many, ten up many years and I was saved when I was a little boy, but I want you to know that conversion it, it's, a, it's a daily process. Uh, it just didn't take place uh, 30 some years ago you got to work on that conversion you got to work to keep the spirit dwelling on the inside of you well, yeah yeah and that's the problem we'll say yeah I was saved I got saved when I was a teenager I got saved when I was a little boy a little girl yeah you may have got saved but what have you done to the question is what evidence do you have that God mm, 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 has converted you. What have you done to ensure that the spirit is still dwelling? Mm. Well, if you want to be a person after God's heart, you must spend consistent time alone with him. Uh, uh, some people do not like to be alone. <laughs> they fill every moment with noise from the radio, TV, or social media. They feel a need to be around people constantly. You know, I, some, someone asked me the other day, what do you do for fun? I said, well, I'm, a, I'm boring. <laughs> 
I stay home by myself, you know. That's I, 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 just, just me. I, I never was a type that had a social life. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm an introvert. Uh, 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 I'm not as loud as you think, Sister Greer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, I, I stay to myself, <laughs> and, 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 and when you stay to yourself, you have time for God. And, and when you stay to yourself, you have time for meditation. So consequently, you won't grow into in the things of God unless you spend time alone with him. You got to make God a priority on your agenda. You have to make prayer a priority daily and throughout the day to keep your heart filled with the Holy Spirit. And as a result, you will praise and worship the Lord with a whole heart, with all your heart, soul, and mind when you spend time with God. Also, we've got to have a spirit of humility. You know, it does not matter how successful you are, you can still have a heart for God. To have a spirit of humility, you must keep success from crowding God out of your heart by keeping it in check. You do not have to be a doormat. For humankind to be humble? No. <laughs> you know, uh, I often tell folk when I was in, you know, <laughs> leading people in the military, you know, for 26 years, don't take my kindness for a weakness. <laughs> no, don't take my kindness for a weakness. Yeah, I, I don't curse. Uh, I, I, I don't do this. I don't do that. And I don't have to raise my voice. But, but, but don't, don't take my kindness as a weakness. Uh, uh, because I can't, arise, I can't arise to the occasion uh, if need be. But it takes more work to do that. <laughs> You know, it's easier to, 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 to be nice and, 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 and smile all the time. <laughs> and, 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 so, and so, uh, so, but what we're saying is humility is simply recognizing the grace and mercy of God. And when it comes to success and accomplishment, humility recognizes where these things come from. See, that, that, that's what humility is. You can be successful. You can have prosperity. You can have all of these things. But as long as you know where the prosperity and success came from and give God the glory and give God the credit, mm, you got a spirit of humility. Moses didn't have a spirit of humility. When, 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 when they said, when he said, who gave those people, who gave the children of Israel water? And Moses said, I took my rod and struck the rock and water came out. He got caught up into selfishness. But, but, but if he wanted to have a spirit of humility, he would have said, the Lord told me to take my rod and, 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 and told me to hit that rock and out of the rock the Lord brought water from that rock. That's when you have a spirit of humility when you give all praises and honor to God. So it's okay to be successful but you got to make sure that you keep selfishness in check. So when things are going well, do you really pray? Uh, uh, when you are enjoying promotions or bonuses on your job, do you recognize that God is the ultimate source of those blessings? For all of the material things that I've achieved in this world, I thank God for allowing me to be where I am. I thank God for allowing me to achieve those uh, achievements. And I thank God for putting people in my place that allowed me to step on their shoulders and rise above and lift me to another level in my ministry and in my life. You got to give prayer and praise to God and have a spirit of humility. 
Continue to remain humble and do not allow selfishness to take control of your heart. The antidote of selfishness is worshiping God, whereas selfishness shrinks the heart. The praise of God expands the heart. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you heard what them old season saints say. They just got a big heart. The reason they got a big heart is because they give God the glory. Give God the praise. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for putting food on my table. Thank you, Lord, for making a waste out of no way. Thank you, Lord, for keeping my children. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. When you continue to thank him, your heart expands, your heart grows, and you have a spirit of humility, of love, joy, peace, and happiness. Uh, and so it expands the heart, and it creates room for God and dispels the unnecessary things in life. David said, I will not set anything godless before my eyes. Psalms 101 and 3. <laughs> Some people have filled their thoughts and sighs on things that are insignificant, worthless, and do not matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, you need to pray <laughs> as David prayed. <laughs> Confirm what you said to your servant, <laughs> for it produces reverence for you. Psalms 119 and 38. <laughs> keep a spirit of humility, because <laughs> when you keep a spirit of humility, Humility. It expands your heart. It expands room for God to come in and fill it, continue to dwell inside of you because you have been changed by the power of the Almighty Holy Ghost. And then finally, you ought to have a song in your heart. I will sing your praise. I will sing praise to you. You need to say your praise and sing your praise to the Lord. You need to find your favorite hymns or gospel songs to sing any time or any place in order to worship the Lord. What are you talking about, preacher? Here we are in the shortest month of the year, February. And it has been decided that February is Black History Month. Well, I'm reminded of my, what my four parents did. There are some places in this world that you cannot sing openly. But there is nothing preventing you from singing and worshiping the Lord in your mind. You might not be able to shout on your job physically, but every now and then you ought to be able to shout in your mind, worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Yeah, Brother Saunders, you may not be able to shout driving that bus, but in your mind, you can get a shout on. You can get a praise on while you're driving. It doesn't matter where you are because our ancestors had a heart of worship to God during the dark days of slavery gave birth to songs of hope and deliverance just as I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around I'm tramping tramping trying to make heaven my home were you there when they crucified my Lord hold my hand while I run this race I do not want my running to be in vain. They sung those songs because they had a heart filled with the Spirit of God. They were converted. They had conversion. They had a heart filled with God. They had a spirit of humility. And their heart was filled with a song of praise. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine all over the world. I'm going to let my light shine. These songs were born out of the assemblies in the field by the riverside and in praises houses where the spirit of God was moving in the people's creativity where powers express themselves to God. Finally, it is in our bloodline to praise and worship God. How often do you say thank you 
to someone for their kindness. It's in our bloodline to praise God. I don't know, but you know they say because of our race, we can we got we got soul we got to beat but somehow or another if you ask my wife she'll tell me that i got left out of that beat that i can't dance but i want you to know one thing it does not matter in the house of god i may not be able to dance in the joke joint but when i come to the house of the lord I can get my dance on. I can get my praise on. Because when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that is done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. And I got to worship Him with a whole heart because He's done mighty things in my life. He let me know that He is a God that can heal. He healed my mother, He healed my father. He healed my granny and he healed me when I got here to Emmanuel in 2021. I, well, 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 that's why I can praise him with a whole heart because I've seen his works and I'm a witness of what God can do. So that's why I keep a smile on my face because I have the spirit of the Lord on the inside of me. Dwelling on the inside, radiating on the outside. Yes, I hurt every now and then. Yes, I get upset every now and then. But this too shall pass because the storm is passing over. Creating a heart of worship. David said, I'll give you thanks with all my heart. I'll sing your praises before the gods. I'll bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your mercy and your truth. For you have made your word great according to all your name creating a heart of worship let us all stand maybe you heard the word this morning and you have a hard heart on this morning God and soften your heart if you confess your faults your sins and allow him to fill you with the anointing the Holy Spirit and then you continue to have a relationship with him reading and studying your word feeding your heart You're, you are going to hear me preach about some starving Christians I'm hungry right now because I'm physically hungry <laughs> but there are some spiritual hunger in the house all because you don't feed your spiritual body. Just as your physical body. I'm not a professional, so I can't, can't give you no dietary suggestions. But for me, I got to have three meals. <laughs> One may work for you, but I need three. I got to feed my physical body to keep it looking the, as big as it is right now. We got to do the same for the spiritual body. A lot of us, our spiritual body is starving. Our spiritual body may be skin and bones all because we're not feeding it. But in order to line up with what Brother David, 
got to feed that spiritual body. So if you're ready to feed your spiritual body, the altar is open for you to come. Say, Lord, I'm ready to be saved on today. Lord, I'm ready to rededicate because I'm backslidden. I'm hungry, and I need you to feed me. Or you may be looking for a church home and you want to put your membership here at Emmanuel. Where a stranger can find a friend and a sinner will find Christ. The altar is open. And this same plea goes out to those that are tuning in to us virtually. We ask that. You send us a direct message and let us know what category you fall in. We will respond to you. We love you. We are concerned about you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. You may be seen. Give me a clean heart so that I can follow you. We didn't plan this thing. Let us all stand, come from the rear, and come forward. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We are so grateful. We are so grateful to have in our midst. Uh, Sister, Sister Langston is back in the house one more time. Amen. She's looking good. She's looking good. Brother Langston is smiling hard because his wife is back in the house. Amen. Amen. And we're excited to to always see Bishop Edmonds in the house, amen. It's always good to have him in the house. And Reverend Earl Morris is here today. We thank God for all of the clergy, amen. And to all those that are still recovering to come back to the house of God. We are very grateful and thankful for what God is doing and what it has done. 
Now, as we get ready to prepare for Holy Communion, we do not hold a uh, closed communion. We ask that you would participate with us and those uh, virtually. Uh, we ask that you would now prepare those elements that you have prepared for this time uh, as we uh, go through the, the uh, liturgy of Holy Communion. Uh, I will commune myself first, and then I will commune the staff, and then I will commune the first table. And at the conclusion of the first table, I will look to the camera and commune those who are tuning in virtually to com have communion with us on today. Um, we will all recite the general confession and, uh, and the clergy will read the assignments that I have given and, and not read anything else. <laughs> First collect will be Reverend Blackwell and the prayer of humiliation. The second collect and prayer of adoration will be Reverend Edmonds. Amen. And then all the other readings I'll take care of. Amen. Now as you are preparing yourselves, we ask that you would now prepare yourselves for Holy Communion. For Holy Communion. Prepare your heart. Prepare your soul and your mind to receive the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To receive the cup, which is symbolic of the blood that flowed from his body to wash away all our sins. As the choir now sings the hymn of preparation, let us prepare. do truly and earnestly repent in the heart of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and let us fill this first table draw near with faith and let us fill the first table with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession by to almighty God by meekly kneeling upon your knees. You may kneel those that can remain standing to those who cannot. Amen. And let us all recite the general confession.
true faith, turn unto you. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm your contrition us and all your goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, into whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meek and it's right in our bounding duties that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, the Almighty, the everlasting God. And therefore, with the angels and the archangels of all the company in heaven, we lord and we magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and singing. did give your only son Jesus Christ to suffer death on the cross for our redemption who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine. According to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be pardoned, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, take, eat, for this is my body, which is broken for do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And now, on this second first Sunday in the year of 2024, I have prepared to receive these, this broken element, which is symbolic of the broken body of Jesus. Take and I eat, and I feast on it, and my heart with thanksgiving, and I'm grateful. And now I hold this flask, filled with 
the symbolic of the blood of Jesus that Jesus spilled just for Billy Hunt. take and drink this not lightly because I'm reminded of the work that he did just for me. Now after receiving both the body and the blood of Jesus I have renewed my covenant Signifying that I'm still on the Lord's side. And now I rise. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was broken just for you and now take and drink drink all of it feast on it in your heart with thanksgiving and be grateful you all have renewed your covenant signifying that you are still on the Lord's side You may now take and eat the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken just for you. Feast on it in your heart with thanksgiving. And now take and drink. Drink all of it, that it may strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Brother Mitchell, Sister Nate Down, Sister Smith. Sister Swilly, Brother Fuller, Brother Watson, Brother Bowden, Sister Saunders, and Sister Diggs. You all have renewed your covenant, signifying that you're still on the Lord's side. You may rise, go in peace. Go in peace. Now those that cannot come to the altar, Reverend uh, Blackwell will be coming out. Make sure that we have an officer standing to those that cannot come to the altar. All those that can't come to the altar, the altar is open for you to come. Come and let us fill the table. Now to the social media platform. Take and eat the bread that you have prepared for communion. Take and eat. Eat all of it. Feast on it. In your heart with thanksgiving and be grateful. And now the cup that you have prepared. Take and drink. Drink all of it, that it may strengthen you and preserve both body and soul into everlasting life. My social media platform, virtual members, you all have renewed your covenant, signifying that you're still on the Lord's side. Go in peace. Make your humble confession by meekly kneeling upon your knees.
that it may strengthen you and preserve both body and soul into everlasting life. You all have renewed your covenant, signifying that you're still on the Lord's side. Go in peace. a confession by making kneeling upon your knees. eat the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was broken just for you feast on it in your heart with thanksgiving and be grateful and now prepare the cup take and drink drink all of it that it may strengthen you and preserve your body and soul into everlasting life the blood of Jesus was shed just for you for the remission of your sins drink all of it God bless you God bless you Bishop God bless you Bishop amen one more time you all have renewed your covenant you may rise go in peace as these retire let others come come to fill the table Steps of Swanson. Get their own communion. Take and eat the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken just for you. And now prepare the cup that it houses the symbolic of the blood of Jesus that was shed just for you for the remission of your sins. Take and drink. Drink all of it that it may strengthen you, preserve you unto life everlasting. The hallelujah choir, you all have renewed your covenant, signifying that you're still on the Lord's side. Go in peace, you may rise. Peace come. No it was the blood no it was the blood for me yeah 
You got it, Sister Watson. Let us all repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Oh, Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and depth of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. Unto you, humbly beseeching you, that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardon our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father, Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us all stand and affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the dead he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the life, and the life of the rest.
created a heart of worship. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with his seed in joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore, and the redeemed of the Lord said. What is the Lord going to do for you this week? What is the Lord going to do for you this week? Bless you. What is the Lord going to do for you this week? Amen. God bless you. Bless you.